Hi, uh, good day to everybody. Um, today we are going to continue our lesson 1.4 uh, and talk about the various uh, parts of and tools of Kendo. If you haven't watched the first three videos, please have a look at the links sent by Ratsan in the group. So today um, in the lesson 1.4, we have Ratsan with us joining us from USA. He has prepared himself in his Gi Geko Gi Hakama, his Bogu, ready to show us and help us understand uh, the various uh, uh, tools and the parts and the equipment which is essential for Kendo. Uh, today we are going to talk about all the parts of the Bogu, which include uh, Geko Gi, Hakama, Tare Do Men, and of course the Kote. And the, the Shinai Subadome Suba we already talked about. So let us go one by one. Uh, so Ratsan is here with us today. Thank you, Ratsan. Thank you for your support. Hello, thank you. Okay. So uh Ratsan is today dressed uh, at the beginning in the Hakama and Gi. So, uh, if you can, Ratsan, if you can kindly show them the Hakama. Uh, the Hakama is a divided skirt in Japanese. The, as you can see in the middle, it's split. And if Ratsan can um, yes, show us the split, split part. Yeah, the split skirt. Yeah. So, what happens is that uh, samurais use this uh, hakama as a uh, horse riding pants because in in present day when we ride a horse we strap our feet so that our feet don't rub against the belly of the horse however in the earlier times the feet used to rub and they needed a solution so they put extra cloth around the feet to protect the feet the skin from rubbing against the horse this extra cloth is why Hakama looks big and looks very, very uh, fluffy like a, like a skirt. However, uh, in order to preserve the samurai tradition and also to hide the foot from your opponent while showing, uh, while doing the action, they continue to use the Hakama until uh, uh, today. So, Ratsan, if you can turn to your left and show us the side view of your Hakama. So you see the side view as you can see from the Hakama is the behind part has a plate which is go, which goes right above your waist level and uh, the front part uh, you see how it's lying and how it's covering uh, until the very tip of your foot so that your foot is hidden from the opponent. Now uh, in the front side Ratsan if you turn to the front, yes, in the front side, uh, we have five pleats. So you can turn. Yes, in the front side, we have five pleats. And, and also uh, at the back, you have one pleat and a, and a place to where you can write your name. Exactly. Now, uh, this is the Hakama. And then uh, let's go towards the Gi. Now, the Gi or the Keiko Gi is the same Gi that we use in Judo, Karate, uh, Jiu Jitsu. All the Gi's are the same, except for the color. In Kendo, we use the indigo colored Gi. And in Karate, we would use a white Gi. The only probable difference is because with the indigo, it soaks up all the sweat. So a white gi would probably become yellow after a couple of years, but uh, indigo colored gi will remain indigo colored, uh, except for a little fading. That's the reason we keep the, uh, the color as indigo. Uh, this is the uh, hakama and gi that we talked about today. I already explained to you 
Great. So uh, Ratsan is now going to help us to understand the various parts of the Bogu. Bogu means the armor in Japanese. So whenever I say Bogu, please remember I'm talking about the entire armor of the Kendoka. Uh, beginning with the first one, like Ratsan is holding in front of us, is called Tare. The Tare is your waist protector. It protects, it goes around the waist and protects your waist. As you can see, there is a nafuda, which means a tare name. The tare name, in case of Ratsan, says Shudokan Subramanyam. So, usually we have the name of the dojo on the top, which says Shudokan. And in vertical letters, we have Katakana in Japanese, where uh, the last name of the person is usually written. So, Ratsan's full name is uh, Rajgopal and Subramaniam. So Subramaniam is going to be his last name on his tare. Similarly, if there is somebody called Shingo Nakamura, only Nakamura, only the last part will be on his tare. Uh, so this is your tare. It has two straps uh, which go around the waist and get tied around the waist. Exactly. Right, uh, moving on to the next one, we have the chest protector, Do. Right, the Do, as Rasan is holding in front of us, is a uh, chest protector originally made in bamboo. However, nowadays, made from luck or made from uh, resin. Sometimes use uh, shark skin and leather skin and usually the hit of the shinai is completely taken by the do, the chest protector. The do is flexible so you can, uh, in fact, you can bend it a little bit to ha so that it has a give. It has a give in order to take the strikes. And uh, the top part, mine, is uh, made of leather the straps are held by leather straps however it's uh, the the straps are also cotton so a dough will usually last for about 10 or 20 years and also provided that the leather straps are regularly changed let's move on to the kote Now the kote is your wrist and arm protector. As you can see, the kote has a gauntlet and followed by a protector. Protector area is where we are going to hit and we, like I will explain in the next section. And the left and the right kote uh, goes into your wrist, yes. And as you can see that the opposite side, it's made of, it's covered with threads so that uh, we can remove it easily and also to show that the inner part of the wrist is not a target, only the external part, not the inner part, only the external part. Yes. And finally, after Kote, let's move on to the men. So the men is your head protector, which has these titanium uh, protector mesh around it. It's light and it's very heavy, heavyweight, uh, light and very, very strong so that it can take the strikes of the shinai. It's covered with a cotton futon, which is called the men buton. The men buton is flexible. It's, it is protecting your head as well as protecting your shoulders. Similar to the dough, the men is also held with leather straps followed by cotton straps around and the cotton straps go around the head and form a good fit with your chin and your forehead so that it doesn't move. Right. In the next section today, uh, great. In the next section today, Ratsan is going to put on all his bogey and explain to you the Yuko Tatotsu. So we are going to talk about expl explanation of all this Bogu in the next section of this video. So Ratsan, I would like you to now uh, put on the Bogu and get prepared. Thank you. 
Yes, so as you can see all of us uh, that Rasan is ready. He has put on his tare and his do and he's ready in his uh, seza position. Now Rajasthan is going to show us how to put on the men. Uh, in his left hand, as you can see, he has a tenugui. A tenugui is a cotton cloth, which is a hand towel. And uh, Rajasthan is going to show us now how this tenugui or the hand towel with its characters face towards the opponent is yes, and how it's uh, put, put on. So Rajasthan is demonstrating it to us. So Ratsan is now putting on the Tenugui in a beautiful manner and uh, as you can see you, he makes sure that the Tenugui comes above his eyebrows does not go too much below during the, the, the fight he's going to put on the men now so after you're done with the Tenugui the men goes on on your on your on your face he puts it up he, he pulls the uh, strings out yes. <laughs> As you can see, the men put on the is covering the shoulder part here and now he is uh, preparing to put the heel together at the right place before he can tie them up. He's tying a, he's tying a knot like a butterfly knot behind his head so that the the men remains fixed and this knot goes back around uh, 40 centimeters length at, at equal length so he's now extending equal length and then pulling them back right and then yes he's checking his men his men okay and now he's good going to put on his kote first he puts on his left kote and then he puts on his right kote the gauntlet and with his left hand, he picks up the shinai. So now Ratsan is going to go in the kamai position. Uh, we have a couple of minutes left with us. So let us explain to you what are the various tatotsubui. Tatotsubui means the valid striking zones in kendo. There are four valid striking zones in kendo. The first one, as you can clearly see in his kamai position, is his right wrist. His right wrist out, not the inner part, the outer part of the right wrist is cleanly available. So this right wrist is the first target strike, which is called Kote. Ratsan, please show us the right wrist Kote striking zone. Right. The next one we will go is the men. So the men is on the top here. So we have, as we learned, Sayu men and men right on the top of his head, on the top of his head. After, uh, on the top of his head is the men. And then, yes. And then from the men, we go to the next striking zone, which is called the Do. So right under his right arm, the right side of his Do. The right side of his door is called is the wakido. Now the wakido is the only striking zone. So Ratsan, if you can show us uh, the wakido, please, to show them what is the right striking zone. Not the entire door. The front part of the door is not the right striking zone. Only the wakido, which means only the side door is the striking zone. And finally, we go to the next position, which is called tsuki. Now, be, between the men and your uh, do mine, you have this little little thing uh, protector, which is protecting your neck. This is called tsuki. The next target point is tsuki. All right. So today we learned about the four target, target points, kote, men, do, tsuki. Once again, kote, men, do the, the the chest and finally tsuki the neck with this i would like to end today's video please uh, see this video and then let us follow up this lesson in the weekly session thank you very much Rajasthan, for helping us out thank you very much thank you